Hi class. Next, we're interested in the asymptotic evaluation of integrals that we could get from Fourier transforms. So this is a Laplace-like integral, i of x, is the integral from a to b dt, f of t, times an exponential. But what's sitting in the exponential is an oscillatory function, e to the i psi of t, where psi is some other function of t as x goes to infinity. This is the complex analog of a Laplace integral. From our experience with uh, Laplace's method and Laplace integrals, we would expect that uh, we might have um, some difficulty if psi has a critical point where the derivative vanishes sometime, someplace in the interval from a to b. So for the moment, let's assume psi prime of t is not equal to 0. And let's just try to go ahead and integrate by parts. i of x, then, we can write as the derivative. Uh, we, can, we can change e to the i x psi of t to the derivative with respect to t of e to the i x psi of t dividing by i x psi prime of t. We can do integration by parts. We get f of t over i x psi prime of t e to the i x psi of t evaluated at the endpoints b and a minus something that's got an extra 1 over x in front of it relative to the kind of integral that we started with. So it's, it seems like integration by parts is going to work if we can somehow show that this integral over here is small and that the, the, the controlling 1 over x is sufficient to make the, the, the remainder smaller than the terms that we've kept. In fact, we can show that the kind of integral that we're talking about here is small due to a very famous and important lemma in mathematical physics, the riemann lebesgue lemma, that says if we're interested if in, in looking at some, the behavior of the integral from a to b of f of t e to the i x of t dt, if you want, this is like looking at the value of the Fourier transform at large frequency if we think of t as time and a and b are, are negative infinity and positive infinity, then what the riemann lebesgue lemma says is as long as the integral of the absolute value of f of t is bounded. It doesn't even need to be continuous. f of t could be a discontinuous function. It could have discontinuous derivatives, uh, etc. Then what the riemann lebesgue lemma shows is the limit as x goes to positive infinity, in fact, it could be positive or negative and as far as the riemann lebesgue lemma is concerned, of the integral from a to b, e to the i, x of t, f of t dt is 0. So if that's true, then that means that this second term is small compared to the first term. And here we just sort of do a change of variables to show that that's correct. And what we would expect then is we could do, we could, we, we could continue, we could do integration by parts on this next term. And what we find is in general that the function i of x is asymptotic to f of t over i x e to the i psi of t times x evaluated, sorry, there's an x here. Uh, evaluated at b sub, uh, minus its value at a, and then if we integrate by parts more times, we're going to get a general sum, which is a sum of oscillating functions divided by x to the n. So for example, here is a, a function of this form, e to the i x t over 1 plus t dt. We can just go ahead and do integration by parts, and here's the first term in the asymptotic expansion. Actually, as written here with the remainder term, it's, just, it's, a, it's an actual uh, it's, a, uh, it's an exact expression, but in the limit x goes to infinity, this is the first term of the asymptotic expansion. In general, the asymptotic expansion has the form e to the i x times some function u plus a function v, and we can evaluate, say, here are the first two terms. We can evaluate as many terms as we want. So that naturally brings us to the question of what happens if psi has a critical point within the domain? What happens if psi prime of t vanishes somewhere uh, between a and b? That brings us to the method of stationary phase, which we will discuss next time.